Hello beautiful Italia learners and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Germana and today I want to share with you a very interesting conversation I had the pleasure to have with a very special guest. Her name is Urmi Hussein and probably some of you have already heard of her. She's a passionate YouTuber, author of a book, blogger, but also teacher of the Italian language. So I hope that her story could be of inspiration for those of you who want to know more about Italy, not only under a language perspective, but also in terms of culture, ways of living, current work situation, and of course, food. As you know, many Italians left Italy for Canada in the past because they were looking for better job and life opportunities. And today we will discover what's going on in Italy and Canada and we'll find out some very interesting differences and similarities. Urmi will share with us her personal experience and story and we will learn a lot from her. So if you're ready, let's get started! Hi Urmi, thanks a lot for being here today, for being my guest, my special guest <laughs> on my channel. So um, I wanted to ask you um, something about your personal story because it's very, I found it very interesting. And you said you moved from Italy to Canada 12 years ago. And what Italian city or cities did you grow up and live in when you were here in Italy? Okay, so it's going to be a lengthy answer because I've been to many, many places when I was uh, living in Italy. So I was born and uh, I was born in Sicily. I was born in uh, Palermo and uh, I was there for like nine years. And then uh, after that, my parents decided to, to move to the north for better lifestyle, better job opportunities. And we basically moved to Bijemano, which is in uh, Pavia. And every time I say this, no one ever knows what I'm talking about, but it's basically in the north. Uh, so we were there for uh, three years and I did my a little bit of my high school there. And then again, my parents were like, okay, let's move again. So we moved to England and I actually went to UK wow. for a year. This is where I would say I learned English the proper way. Um, and I did a little bit of high school there as well, but it was just for a year. And then we went back to Italy. So this time we actually went back to Milan and I was living, basically I was living in um, in a little town outside of uh, Milan, mm -hmm. it's called Limbiate, which I'm not expecting people to know. I was uh, I was living <laughs> there, and this is where I did like my high school. I did my uh, Esame di Maturità, which is the exam, the government exam that everyone has to do. Yeah. Um, and then and then I moved and I did the university here in Canada. So I lived in like different parts of the of like Italy, like south, north, in a different country as well. So I was always moving. Yeah, so now you have like a clear overview of what is Italy, <laughs> all the parts of Italy from north to south. That's very interesting. What do you think about the country? I mean, do you think Italy is a country at the cutting edge in terms of job opportunities? As you mentioned before, you move because of job, more job opportunities abroad. And do you see a future for young generations? So sadly, I would say that there is a little bit of difficulty when it comes to finding a job in Italy. That's how I feel about it, even especially after that I have after moving here to Canada. Um, I do think that it, in the South, it's a little bit much harder to find a job because things are not as developed as other parts of the of the country. And uh, I do think that when you move to the north, there is a little bit more of opportunities, especially because I think that you have like neighborhood countries like France, you have yeah. Germ uh, Ger uh, Ger uh, German, uh, not sorry, Germany, um, you have like Spain, UK, which I think it makes it a little bit easier to find uh, jobs. But I do think that uh, if I have lived in Italy, I think I would have had a little bit of difficulty finding a job, especially after having a degree. And I've seen this also with some of my closest friends that live in Italy. They tell me they were like, uh, you know, here in Italy, like yeah. if when you get a job, you just stick to it until you retire. Whereas in other countries, especially in Canada, people are just hopping from one place to another like it was nothing. So it's very, I do think that it's very difficult to find a job in, in Italy in general. And uh, fortunately, I feel like there isn't like much hasn't been done. And I think it has mm -hmm. been that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Unfortunately, that's the saddest part of Italy. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, so talking about a bit about history, because this is very um, related to nowadays, what you said. But if we come back to the past, uh, if I think about the mass immigration of Italians, especially <laughs> from the south, uh of italy to canada that occurred before where world were the first or between 50s and 70s they moved because canada was offering more opportunities to make a living than italy did that time so how is canada today in terms of job opportunities i think it's definitely um a place where you can find jobs and i do think that we do have we we did have a lot of immigrants coming back in the days from italy we still have a lot but not not just from italy we have people from coming coming from other parts of the world like latin american countries and they all come because canada is a land of opportunity and i do mm -hmm. think that it is like that um because especially like in different sectors you can find jobs and uh I also felt the same as well when I was uh when I was moving here when I was looking for a job it can be a little bit difficult maybe probably at the beginning maybe you might have to do some specific sort of certification maybe you have to learn the language depending on which province yeah. you live because of course Canada it's a it's a bilingual country you speak uh, two languages and depending in which province you live then you might need one language than the other a bit more mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that it's a, it is a, um, a land of opportunities. It has a strong economy and, you know, jobs are always created and people, and as I said before, like, it's a very competitive market, believe it or not. Like, there are people that are always, like, doing something uh, extra to, like, improve themselves and the person next to you might have, like, 500 degrees and they're always wow. like, doing something extra to be, um, to be competitive, to be better. So there is a lot of, like... Um, there is a good pool of like uh, good candidates that mm -hmm. know that know a lot about the um the field and stuff like that so it is definitely a place where people can can find a job and i do think that the lifestyle in canada is a bit better um in terms of italy in when it comes to like security job security i would say um and also like all the benefits that the country offers so in yeah. terms of that i do think canada is better but i do think that italy it's more a place for you if you want to like visit and travel but it's not mm -hmm. a place you can settle because of like some of these issues that are, the country still has yeah yeah that's so true italy it's mostly a country for tourism nowadays and it's perfect if you want to visit, just staying for a little time. But for working, yeah, the reality is completely different. There's something that you particularly miss about Italy, if anything, in general. You know what? Actually, um, this was something that I was telling the other day to one of my coworkers. I was saying, like, because usually when I tell everyone, oh, I'm from Italy, they're like, oh, why did you leave Italy? But it's like <laughs> so you have to face the reality when you're leaving there. But now that I have been living in Canada for like a long time, I do appreciate more uh, my, how my life was in Italy and I do miss it a lot. Um, oh. I do miss it a lot. I like I miss like not talking Italian on a regular basis. And um, but I would say that what I miss the most is food <laughs> because <laughs> it is the best cuisine in the world. And I and every time I miss Italy, I go to this uh, supermarket that we have uh, here in, in, in Montreal where they have all these goods imported from Italy. So they have like things from Mudino wow. Bianco, mm -hmm. uh, but it, uh, keen there so I usually go there and get the snacks and I miss a lot of the snacks because I cannot find the same quality or same the same exact uh, snacks in the Canadian stores so I do miss a lot the the Italian like snacks and, and food. yeah I guess yeah. So. <laughs> you find the main brands also Barilla I guess it's common there for pasta Yes, Barilla is common, like even in Canadian stores. But if you're looking for a specific sauce from Barilla, you have to go to Berkecce, which is this Italian store where oh, you find like, all the goodies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you ever think about moving back here instead? Mm. No, not for the moment, I would say. Like, not moving back on a permanent base. If I do move back, it would be like, on a temporary basis uh it will be just me taking a sabbatical year but not on a permanent basis i think uh, i will always go to a place where there is like an opportunity for me to actually mm -hmm. work and you know have a business there rather than just uh i think italy it's, it's like i said like if you want to relax 
that's a place you want to go like you just enjoy the yeah sun the food uh the you know the weather the sea but it's not uh, like I wouldn't go back for like to go work to live permanently yeah yeah not work really it's, it's an important it's it's what really moves our generations now because it's very hard to find work here in Italy and really we make our choices based on that where can I find yeah. work so I apply there yeah now it's it's like this and yeah. you said before that Canada is a bilingual country it's also an Italian speaking country because there are lots of communities of Italians uh aren't there yes so it is a bilingual country so you must know how to speak English and French that's uh like that's the rule um but here's the thing about Canada it's a melting pot so you have people from like different <laughs> parts of the world from different countries and you have different communities um I would say okay I didn't know before moving to Montreal that there were so many Italians in Montreal but there are way too many and it's not a part of the official language like Italian but it is a language that is spoken a lot mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you an example because um now I work in a place where For some reason, there are many Italians and it's the first time that I encounter that type of situation where there are so many Italians, but these are like uh, kids of immigrants that have moved back in the 50s. So these are people that have that are born here. They are they have grown. They, are, they grew up here. So they actually speak the dialect. They don't even speak mm. the actual Italian. Wow. And what happens is. Maybe before I could speak in a workplace in Italian and no one would understand me. But here, where I work right now, I have to be extra careful about what I'm saying because people around me, for some reason, they know the language. So even like the non-Italian, they seem to know the Italian language. And so now it happens that at work, I do get to speak with some of my coworkers in Italian, which wasn't like I've been working in the industry for six, seven years, but it never occurred to me that in my previous jobs, I would meet that many Italians. It's like I would meet a lot of people from different community. But in this one in specific, I do get to speak Italian. And if you go to Little Italy, which is like an, yeah. an area here in uh, Montreal, you have people that have like coffee shops. They have restaurants that are Ita owned by Italian people. And you can actually speak Italian with the people there. They're actually going to reply to you in Italian. So it happens oh, cool. to me that... It happens to me that, that whenever I'm like going to a coffee shop, let's say like in a coffee store to get coffee, I speak to them directly in Italian. They reply to me in Italian. Uh, same thing with the supermarket, the Italian supermarket, which is owned by an Italian family. I just speak directly in Italian because I know that it's like by it's owned by Italian. So it's um it's not an official language, but you do have a lot of people speaking Italian because there is a very, very big uh, community. Yeah, wow, can imagine. <laughs> And as you mentioned before, um, you said you really miss the Italian food, so you try to find as much Italian food <laughs> as possible. But as you know, Italy has a great food culture. What <laughs> are traditional dishes instead from Canada? And do you also find Italian influences in the Canadian cuisine? So here's the thing. I don't think Canada has one particular dish that is like you, you don't think about Canadian dish. Like when you think Italian, you think, okay, it's pizza and pasta. These are the two main things that you think of. But when you think about yeah. Canada, you cannot associate it with anything. And I think the, um, the thing is that because it's such a big melting pot, we like people that are born here, they eat what the parents, the, the, the parents' culture um have as a cuisine this is what people eat so like let's say you're born in a in an asian family let's say chinese family you eat chinese food if you're born let's say um let's say, i don't know in a, in a moroccan family then you eat uh, moroccan cuisine sure. and so people when they like people when they want to eat something especially like in canada they just say okay which cuisine are we trying rather than saying like canadian cuisine But there is this one particular dish that I think everyone must try when they uh, come to Canada. It's called uh, poutine. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't know if you have ever seen it, but this is, the, I would say this is probably the one common dish, the known dish of Canada. So it's uh, French fries, uh, which is topped with the uh, gravy sauce and cheese curds. 
And it's not a dish that you eat every day because it's fast food and it's fat. So I don't <laughs> to eat that every day, but it is um it is very uh tasty and delicious. Tastes, so if you wanna yeah. like I don't know, you know, one like you're on a diet and then you're like, okay, let me just eat something for like a junk food. This is definitely um one thing to try and it's very delicious. But I would say this is probably one thing that people um, the people must try when they're moving, when they're coming to Canada. And of course, depending in which province you go, there are provinces that make it better than other provinces. So definitely put in <laughs> I would say the most, I would say the traditional food of Canada. Yeah, I must try. Never tried it before. It's not easy <laughs> to find it, of course, here in Italy. But uh, if I ever go to visit Canada, I would try it. Definitely try it. Yes. Thanks for sharing it. And talking about instead another thing. So uh, let's see how is the school system instead in um, in Canada. Is it similar or is it different? Because you said you had your high, you uh, attended high school here in Italy, uh, and then you moved to attend university in Canada. Do you find similarities amongst the two systems? Um. Not really, in the sense that I think in Italy, how it works is that you have five years of elementary, then three years of high school, and then you have three years of, uh, no, then you have five years of um, an, an upper level of high school. I don't even know how you translate yeah. it. That's in Italy, right? But yeah. in Canada, it, it, in Canada, it really depends on um, in which province you are. But typically how it works is that you have six years of elementary Uh, you have five years of high school and then you have two years of college. And once mm -hmm. you're done with college, then you move to university. And um, and again, depending on which province you are, like, for instance, in Quebec, I think uh, you do your elementary and, and high school in, in French. And then I think college, you get to choose in which language you want to have it. And usually college, you get to choose the subject that you want to study. And you do that for two years and then you go to university. And university we have, especially like in Montreal, we have university that are just like English-based. We have those that are French-based and you can choose in um, in which language you want to have your degree completed. So that's how uh -huh. it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's completely different. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, in Italy, for example, we have five years of elementary school instead of yeah. six. So, so already from the really from the beginning, it's totally another thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what's the first cultural shock you had when you had to cope with all <laughs> the, the the different a different culture, really? Okay, there are so many cultural shocks I had. Actually, <laughs> I like I, I honestly, this is. I don't I just had way too many. Um so the first one I would say was the weather, but it's not like the snow. It's actually we have this uh, rain called the freezing rain and I'd never seen this in when I was in Italy. No. So um so basically how it works is that um it's it's a it's a rain, it's raining, but uh when the rain touches the surface it becomes ice. So when um When you're walking outside during on a freezing rain, you have to be really careful because it's like you're walking on a uh, on a skating rink. And wow. so when I first encountered that, I didn't realize what I was walking on to and I fell twice. And I remember I was not able to get up because I was like, I'm <laughs> like I didn't dangerous. have it was dangerous. I didn't have the proper shoes. And this is one of one of the things that I've noticed when I moved to Canada. I'm like, I don't we don't I don't recall seeing this anywhere in, in Italy or anywhere else. And I think it's just a Canadian thing because Yeah, I, definitely. Um, I have a friend who comes from France and was like, Yeah, I never seen freezing rain before coming to to Canada. Uh so that was the first uh, cultural shock that I had. Mm -hmm. Um Uh, the second was um, related to transportation. So basically when I take the metro or the bus, uh, so in Italy, people are like pushing each other when you're like getting into the, the metro, right? Like we don't care. We, we just, do like this. We, we do like this. We just push like whatever. But here they are so like polite. They actually get like on a line. They did. Wow, they, 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 they queue. Do, They queue and whoever comes first goes in first, whoever comes last goes in last. And usually people have this tendency of like 
thanking the the driver which is not something oh, that we do in italy so kind. no yeah. you never yeah. see something like this <laughs> yeah you never see something like this so people yeah. have a tendency of like thanking the the driver and people are like naturally very polite in general this yeah. is what i feel like canadians are known for for being polite and saying sorry all the time uh so that was another shock that that i um encountered <laughs> when i came to yeah. to canada and one last one was uh, related to how things operate here in Canada. So, like, you know how in Italy, like, sh- shops, they close, like, at 9, usually? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But in Canada, things close at 5 p.m. <gasps> yeah. Wow, very early. Yes. So, usually how it works is that, like, shopping malls, let's say they open at 10, they close at 5 p.m. At, from Mondays to Wednesdays. And then... Thursday and Friday, they close at 9. And then Saturday and Sunday, things are open and they close at 5 p.m. as well. So I remember, like, because I work from, like, 9 to 5. And if I want to go to a store, sometimes I cannot go because they close at 5. So this was one thing that I noticed is that things close at 5 p.m. And then, like, and streets are empty at some point because it's, like, everyone just So that was another no shock. And, and this is one thing that frustrates me about Canada. It's like, why are things closing so early? Yeah. But it is, it is the thing about uh, Canada that things tend to close really early. Yeah. And I can imagine the amount of people that you can meet if you go just the days uh, the, the shops are open till nine. So you find yourself in a huge crowd, I guess, because all the people go, they know the shops close very yes. late. The day. Yeah. Yeah, so pre-pandemic, you would see, like, Saturdays and Sundays were the crowdiest uh, yeah. days when you would go, like, if you go shop, people would always be there pre-pandemic. Um, post-pandemic, I feel like it got a little bit better because you have people working from home, so they take the lunch hour and just yeah, go. more balanced. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like, this thing about closing at 5 p.m., it's uh, something that I have, like, yeah. a little bit of time, but <laughs> six, 5 or 6 p.m., that's I would say six is probably the maximum. Like nothing wow. is open after six. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That's very, that's completely <laughs> different from the Italian way of, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the Italian way, really. Uh, so life is in your, how is life in Montreal, really? So what time <sighs> services are open and closed? You said, you said till six, sometimes till nine. What time instead do you have lunch breaks? So how is <sighs> daily routine of a Canadian living in your area in your city so usually people so basically how things work is that people have 8 30 or 9 a.m until 5 p.m jobs so people that wake up like really early and people do not have uh, the typical Italian breakfast. Like you know how we're we're drinking like coffee and and a croissant at the at the coffee shop. It, this doesn't really happen in in mm-hmm. Montreal. Like this is one thing that I also notice is that the coffee is always on the go, and you never drink <laughs> yes. it out on the spot. This doesn't happen. It's always on the go, and usually people are like they start work really early, so eight uh, eight thirty a.m. And people usually have a tendency of having breakfast at work not at home ah, wow <laughs> yes it's at work and people commute because the commute takes a long time usually depending on where you live so because sure. of that people tend to eat at work and people have this coffee on the go either they take it from home or they buy it and just they just take it from their place and um and here people have everything really early so lunch usually happens i would say between 11 30 and 2 p.m. 2 p.m. being really late so you would never see people like it's really rare to see someone eating at 2 p.m. and people usually have lunch really early and unlike Italy we only have an hour of lunch especially if you're working full-time there's no such thing as three hours lunch and we you know (laughs) between 12 30 and 3 p.m. no there's no such thing and um and people have dinner really early as well they have oh yeah can you imagine if people have dinner like around five or 6 p.m. Yeah, wow. I know. Have a lot of dinners around that time. Of course, it depends if you're like on the weekend. I would say it's like pushed a little bit later. But usually, if you if it's on the on the weekdays, usually people eat really really early. And um and of course, like if you if you have a work event, usually we have this event called San Cassette. This is like in a happy hour, so Yapiri TV. Ah, okay. Yes. And usually so they those, do exist in. Uh... 
yes. Canada. <laughs> they do exist and people actually really like them. And usually they happen between five and seven. seven ah, yes. Yeah. And so be, when those happen, people have dinner later. So these are like things that you would encounter okay. if you're like working uh, full time. And of course, things are open every day. So like even Saturday and Sunday, things, like not offices, but actual stores are open. So it's really normal for you to see things open. This is where people are like, you know, doing the grocery, buying things for the week. And um, and I would say, especially Montreal. So Montreal, it snows a lot during the winter. And you would think, oh, no, people are not doing anything. There are no activities going on, but there are a lot of things happening. But yeah. I would that in the summer Montreal just becomes a very different city like there is a little bit of more life there is a more of a different vibe and people are actually enjoying so we do have a lot of festivals during the summer um, and so people get together and things I would say close a little bit later but not, not <laughs> over 6 p.m and of course restaurants depending on which restaurants you go some like close really late like 10 p.m or 11 p.m and so there is a different lifestyle i would say between winter and summer when it comes to yeah Russia. luckily yeah. Yeah, yeah of course <laughs> you can yeah. enjoy more summer yeah but so tell me instead three things that you like about Italy and Canada. So as they are very two different <laughs> countries, do, do, what, what do you enjoy the most of each one of them? So about um, Italy, definitely uh, the fact that I used to eat uh, croissant, cornetto and cappuccino in the morning because this doesn't happen here. So this is one thing that I do miss a lot about Italy. Um The second thing is I, I miss is uh, gathering at the at the piazza because we don't um, have such thing in, in, in Canada. We don't have it in Montreal. There's no such concept as a piazza. Um, yeah. People usually gather like at people's house or like, you know, restaurants. And so I do miss that about Italy, like gathering all together at the piazza after school true, or true. with your friends. And also the third thing that I miss or that I like about Italy is um, going to the market. But it's the open market <laughs> where you buy the fresh foods. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, in Mercato. Yeah, yeah. Natural. Like, you find really very healthy also. Yes. Food. Like, Yes, fresh food, like Not uh, fish and yeah. Exactly. And we don't have that in Montreal. There is no such thing as this. So I really like miss it about Italy. And um to answer what I like about Canada, so I definitely like the fact that it's very like diverse and multi multicultural, which is something that I haven't seen in other places that I have been. Um Canada has a lot of national parks where you can go and hike. And so this, wow. this is one thing that I really, really like. We do have a lot of nice national parks. And then I would say also the wildlife that we have in Canada. So there are places where you can actually go and see bears. You can see whales. Wow. Yes. Did you go there? I did. Seen... I did. Yes. Oh, I've seen the whales. Cool. I've seen the bears. It was it was a really nice, nice experience. So those are yeah. things I like that's like so like like there's a lot of nature in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The natural part is very beautiful. Yes. Yeah, it is worth to, to visit. So, okay, you and me, thanks a lot for this <laughs> really interesting information about Canada because I know that some of the students that follow my channel are from Canada or from other countries and uh, close to Canada, like the U the US. So they it's very interesting to, to to make this comparison between mm -hmm. the two cultures that are also close in some ways to each other so um, i also know that you teach italian like me online and you know very well that what teaching means so it's also learning of course from the students from it's a win-win situation What's the thing that you enjoy the most when teaching your mother tongue, when teaching Italian in a sense? And where can fi can people find you? So tell me a bit where where you teach and in general, how can people connect to you? Yes, yeah, so I do teach uh, Italian and I talk in. I also teach English. And I think you touched it, like you touched the right point saying that I think it's a win-win situation when it comes to teaching or um, teaching a language because um, <clears throat> even for me, um, it's like a learning process. 
And so I'm teaching the language, but I'm also learning from the other person. And what I like about teaching is that the people that connect with me, they're like locating in different parts of the world. Yeah. So I get to learn about their culture. So this is what I really, really enjoy about teaching. And I get to learn a little bit about their perspective. And I have students from like Latin American countries. I have students from Asia. And, and I feel like if it wasn't for the fact that I got out of this comfort zone and to actually teach online, I don't think I would have met these uh, people. So yeah. I really, really like the fact that when it comes to teaching, I get to learn and I get to meet people from different cultures. So this is one thing that I that I enjoy a lot. And uh, yes, I do teach on italki. So I do teach English and Italian. And uh, people can just type my name. It's Urmi Hossain. And they can just literally find me on um on italki and yeah, i'll link you all the links you want to connect with urmi down yes. below yes on italki and of course i also have a youtube channel it's called urmi hossain um people can just subscribe to my channel i also give tips on how to like learn a language i also have interviews with other people and i also have a blog called myways.ca and i there i talk about public speaking career i talk a little bit about finance and I also have an Instagram uh, account. It's called Urmai Mio. And usually, like all the podcasts I have been, they <clears throat> they are updated, they are like uploaded there. Yeah. And uh, and lastly, of course, I'm on LinkedIn. So if people want to connect with me on LinkedIn, they can they, they can just type my name. It's Urmai Hossain, and um, I'll be happy to connect. Yes, of course. So it was very interesting to have to having you today for this really cultural exchange and. Uh, that's a great opportunity to know to know more about other cultures and find common ground with mm -hmm. people from other culture and you that experience both the Italian culture and Canadian culture have a very general overview of similarities or differences that's very interesting thanks a lot really Umi for being my guest today <laughs> Thank you. So good, that's all for today. I really hope that this video was helpful for you to learn more about the Italian and Canadian culture. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, don't forget to connect with Urmi. You'll find all her links down below. As I said, she's also author of a book called Discovering Your Identity, A Rebirth from Interracial Struggle. So have a look and enjoy. Plus, don't forget that I've been teaching online on italki. So now, if you want to get to know me and book a trial lesson with me, you can find all the information in the description box down below. On italki, you will have the possibility to have one-on-one -on -one online lessons whenever and wherever you want. And all you need is just a long and stable internet connection. This is definitely the most efficient way to learn a language and connect with native speakers. So click on the link in the description box to earn 10 USD italki credits when you sign up for your first lesson. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to connect with me, you can find me on my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter account. See you next time. Ciao!